Hello, this is Graham, and this is a video from the Silver Wellbeing Photography course. If only everything stood still to allow us to take a sharp picture. Well, actually, that would be a bit boring. And besides, sometimes we want to make it obvious that the object is moving. So there's more to capturing movement than necessarily meets the eye. This might sound a bit complicated, but it's not so hard. The challenge is getting the right shutter speed and the right amount of movement of the camera. There are really just four possibilities. Suppose that we were wanting to photograph something that's moving, a train or a cyclist, for example. Sometimes we'll want to freeze the action so that we can study the details of both the subject and its environment. Other times we want to show that it is the subject that's moving against a stationary backdrop, for example, when we photograph a waterfall. A third possibility is that we want to show the subject frozen but the background blurred to convey speed. And finally, we might want to blur both for a more artistic effect. This shot of a train was actually quite easy. We want the train to appear to be moving and the background to be stationary. So to begin with, I set up my camera on a tripod on the opposite platform. I focused on the track itself and remember, if we want to show the subject moving against a sharp background, then we use a shutter speed that is sufficiently slow that the subject has moved enough for it to be blurred. An express train moving at 50 miles an hour will cover one meter in 1 25th of a second. With the aperture at f22 and the ISO set at 200, the shutter speed was around 1 12th of a second, so the train moved about two meters. To show the background blurred, we need to move the camera in the direction of movement of the subject. By panning, as it's called, slightly slower or faster in our movements, the subject and the background will be blurred. Again, this is an experimental technique and you need to chimp for a few shots to make sure that you have the effect that you're after. This picture of the cox in the Oxford bumps was definitely that. With aperture priority set at f5.6, everything else was automatic. I aimed at the boat as it came towards me, finger on the shutter release. All the time I was trying to keep the cox in my viewfinder. As I panned from right to left when it came alongside me, I pressed the trigger. So remember, the challenge is getting the right shutter speed and the right amount of movement of the camera. If we want to freeze the movement of something completely, then the shutter has to open and close so fast that the movement of the subject is very small. It won't actually be frozen, but it will have moved so little that you wouldn't notice it. The tractor was probably traveling at 25 miles an hour. This happens to be just over one centimeter in one one thousandth of a second. So I knew that a shutter speed of around that would be fine. I also wanted to have deep depth of field. So I focused on the road where a vehicle would be passing selected f8 and checked my shutter speed. It was nearly one two thousandth of a second. I could have taken the shot then, but I wanted the best depth of field that I could achieve. So I increased the f number to f11, which brought the shutter speed down to around one thousandth of a second. Then I waited for the vehicle to come past. The first couple were cars, but then I heard the tractor, checked all my settings and just waited for the right moment to press the shutter.